We're excited to have our next guest on with us. We have three joining us. They, it's going to be Genevieve Cabadas, Carly Hosley, and Daniel Williams. They are the organizers and co-founders of Students Undivided. We love to have participation from some of our younger generation who are passionate about our community. Thank you all for being with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Let's see. Oh, uh, wait. Let, uh, uh, got to. Let me unmute you. Are you there? How are you? Hi. How are you? This is the world of Zoom. We do it all, all the time. We've all been going through this. Thank you for being with us. We love having uh, the younger generation on with us. Thank you for having a passion for our community. Thank you for having us. Okay, who wants to start? Tell us what Students Undivided is all about. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we started Students Undivided probably back in June, right around the time of our first protest in Kigo. Um, and it was really, it wasn't something that we had thought about doing previously, but I mean, we all shared the same passion and, you know, the same want to make a difference and to make a change in our community. So it just seemed right to start the organization, um, you know, unofficially, but student led and just kind of work with each other to put together the protests and, you know, the community events. So are you all high school students? We're all college students. Actually. College students. <laughs> In your high school. Okay, okay. But I think it's so important for people of your age and your generation to get involved and to share your passion to make a change in our communities. And I have to ask, so I live in Kigo. What made you guys pick Kigo Harbor for one of the marches in your protest? So there's actually two reasons. So um, I've actually lived, well, I lived in Kigo for about five years. And then for the second half of my time here, I've been here for 10 years. Um, I'm right on the border of Waterford and Kigo. Um, but I mean, I've spent most of my time in Kigo. I mean, you know, restaurants, doing things with friends, that kind of thing. Um, and it's just been a community that I've grown up in. Uh, and it felt right to obviously um, bring it home and to, you know, invite the friends and family and community members that I knew to participate. I know this is your second protest, and do do you want to talk about the first one? I think it went pretty peaceful. What was your experience and your outcome of that one? Yeah, I think that one went really well for us. Um, we planned it about like two weeks before, and it was all very quick for us, it felt. It was kind of just like, hey, let's do a protest. It was during a time where a lot of suburban protests were popping up. Um, I want to say we had about 200 um, protesters with us, um, and I would say it all went very well. Um, it was all our first protest um, for, like, organizing one, so we were very shocked with the outcome, but very pleased with it. We're joined by student organizers of Students Undivided with us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Not one, not two, but three organizers of a protest in the march that will be happening tonight in Kegel Harbor on October 2nd, 4.30 until 7 p.m. So you, you mentioned the early portions of, this, of the movement we saw uh, hit the forefront in the news in, uh, in the early portions of the summer and a lot of the suburban protests that did pop up as a result of uh, many of, in, out of inspiration from many of the more larger cities protests across the U.S. How important is it to bring the issues of these national, of these national concerns to the local suburban level where maybe we don't see it as outwardly as we do in major cities, but these issues are still very much issues in these communities? It's uh, hugely important. If you're able to bring awareness to your neighborhood, that makes all the difference because you can reach Sue from down the street, but she might not meet Bob from like um, a different state, right? So it's causing change with your, your own community and your own people that spreads awareness and people can keep on going so it's cohesive. Also, like if you have one joint community, it's, it's home and it's a safe area for you and for those that you're fighting for. So being able to do something maybe on a smaller scale locally is I think, if not just as important, maybe like a little tiny bit more important than attending like large city protests because large city protests, yes, we want that huge protest, like huge support in that city, but we want to bring it home in these small areas that don't get these, um, don't get a lot of activism. 
just a couple more minutes with you here on the Oakland County Megacast. How do you plan to take the protest to policy to try to make a long lasting change? Um, I would say that um, it really does start small. I think with people seeing these small protests, they see how serious we are. Um, and these small t- protests turn into bigger protests. And um, I think that a lot of the politicians that are seeing this, they understand that this is important. This is something that needs to be done. Um, I think it's just word of mouth is the best way. Yeah, and, oh, sorry. Oh, no, um, we, have, we have Senator Bayer joining us. And I mean, it is extremely important because the more that people begin to understand these issues, And understand that you know even in the suburban communities they can't just sit back and be complacent with what's happening in this country you know they really start to realize that it is about who you vote for because as much as it isn't political to fight for you know the lives that we've lost at the hands of police brutality you know um it's important to you know take that to your politicians who are going to fight for that policy change and who are going to demand that the murderers be brought to justice so um it's very important to you know start with the protest and make them aware of how they can enact change through voting and, uh, you know, electing the right people. I think it's also important to see youth, like youth like us, do something and take a stand because it shows that the upcoming generation or the generation now is not going to hear or it's not standing for this. So we need to see change now. It's not just any change, radical change. Um, it's, it's so important to see young people be active in things like, like politics because there aren't too many young politics, you know what I mean? So it starts with like the youth and we're able to press the message through social media and other um, other ways of communicating. Joined by by organizers of Students Undivided with us today on the Oakland County Megacast, Genevieve, Carly, Daniel, just another couple minutes with you before we will have to say goodbye. Any other information that you would like people to know or is important for people to know about Students Undivided, about your efforts to raise awareness and have discussions on these issues in our community? I mean, I would say what's most important to let people know is that, you know, just come out and join us. You know, even if you're kind of on the fence, if, you know, you're not sure that you would exactly fit in, you know, it's important to come out and to hear the message and to start trying to understand what people are, you know, so passionate about. And on top of that, I mean, start anywhere, you know, if it's a discussion with your family members, if it's signing petitions, even if you can't come out, if you're in one of those vulnerable populations and you're really worried about getting COVID, I mean, obviously, come out, wear a mask. Um, but if you need to stay home, fill out petitions, you know, try to donate to GoFundMe's fighting for the families of, you know, that have lost people. Right. So, um, you know, take action in that way and start somewhere because, uh, you know, you don't want it to get to the point where it's yeah. too late. You got to have the mindset that you're willing to learn, even if you're not going to be able to understand maybe these stories or what people go through, because to be frank, you may never understand, but at least you can sympathize and just have the ability to hear someone. Yeah, and we're really just all about getting the word out there and having people hear us and understand us and understand the movement in general. Because I think that in these small towns, um, there, there is a lot of mis- uh, miscommunication um, about Black Lives Matter and understanding about that. Yeah, and do you think that in some of the other protests that have turned violent, or looting and things of that nature that it is taking away from your message of being peaceful? 100%, I think it does. Um, Those riots are really only happening in the big cities. And a lot of those people that are looting and are rioting aren't a part of the movement. They don't actually believe that Black Lives Matter. They don't really care. I think that a lot of them are just trying to incite violence just because and make um, Black Lives Matter as a movement look bad. Um, So that's why it's really important to have these local protests because it helps us understand that it's a lot more than rioting and looting and violence. Well, we thank you so much for being with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Again, Students Undivided, Black Lives Matter protests taking place tonight in the city of Kiko Harbor. Uh, Kiko Harbor, it will also go through Sylvan Lake, 4.30 to 7 p.m. I know you had a good experience the last time with the police chief as well as uh, some of the politicians there. Also, if you live in the area, we want to remind people traffic delays are expected as well.